So as I promised in the last video, um, I'm going to run some uh, through some crystal filter experiments and uh, show the results on a spectrum analyzer. Uh, there's a few good articles in the QST archives, um, and I've got a list of them here. But the one that you're seeing there is from July 1987, designing and building simple crystal filters. And then there's two others, December 1978, uh, some experiments with high frequency ladder crystal filters and then November 1980, the latter crystal filter design. So uh, all good articles. Um, unfortunately, I can't provide links to these because uh, you have to be an ARL, ARRL member to, uh, to access them. So you might be able to find them on the internet somewhere, uh, but I was able to get them out of the ARRL uh, archive. So the primary article that I'll be working with uh, is the one that you can see on the screen right there. It's uh, 19, July 1987, Designing and Building Simple Crystal Filters. And this article covers the cone type filter. So let me just show you the uh, sort of archetypal design for the cone type filter and it appears uh, up the top there. So really a cone filter consists of N crystals and then each of these capacitors here is the same value. So in this case, um, I've got two, uh, two examples that I'll be showing. One with a 56 picofarad capacitor in each place here, and the other one with a 150 picofarad capacitor in, in each place here. So the cone filter basically uh, is a compromise between the uh, Butterworth filter, which attempts to uh, give maximum flatness through the passband, and the Chebyshev filter, which has steeper skirts. The circuit I have consists of four, four crystal filters. Uh, these are 10 megahertz uh, crystal filters. One, two, three, four here. And ideally, each one of those crystals uh, is uh, within uh, the bandwidth divided by 10 hertz apart. Uh, so in other words, if you're trying to go for a, um, uh, a, a, a one kilohertz crystal filter, then those crystals should all be with, within using a little crystal checker, um, which I've got around here somewhere. Uh, let me show you that. So here's a little crystal checker. I think you, I've seen, I've shown this before in, um, in another video. So basically you put the crystal in here, you hook it up to a frequency counter, and then that, that will give the, uh, the resonant frequency uh, of the crystal itself. Uh, but in any case, uh, the, the crystals that I'm using are all within 50 hertz of one another. Now, the next step uh, is to pick a capacitance value. So the capacitance uh, value for each of these uh, capacitors here affects the bandwidth. Um, and the bandwidth, <coughs> excuse me, itself, the filter varies the inverse square root of the capacitance. So in other words, if you quadruple the capacitance, then that would halve the bandwidth. Also included in the circuit are two terminating resistances here and here, which are pots. Um, which uh, basically uh, act as simple impedance, uh, impedance matches between the input, which is a 50 ohm input from the signal analyzer, and the output, which is also 50 ohms. So uh, let's move next on to uh, seeing um, the effect uh, of the 56 picofarad uh, uh, filter, and that'll be coming right up. Okay, so uh, I, uh, this is the board that I built up in the last video and it consists of three parallel crystal filters. So I'm using the, uh, the very bottom crystal filter right here and uh, that consists of the four 10 megahertz crystals here matched within 50, all within 50 hertz. And then each of these capacitors here is 56 picofarads. So this is basically this circuit here, 56 picofarads. Uh, on the input and on the output, and then three 56 picofarad capacitors to ground between the, uh, the four crystals. And I have uh, a, 1K, a 1K pod on the input uh, and output to act as, uh, act as simple impedance matching. So uh, let's pan up to the uh, signal analyzer and, and see what we've got. And um, so what we've got here is this is with the pots uh, shifted all the way to zero ohms. So 
Uh, this, is if, this is as if the 1K pots weren't in existence. And you can actually see when uh, the crystal filter is poorly matched, we get these, you get these peaks uh, throughout, the, throughout the pass band. And you can see these peaks are, let's just go from the top of here, so minus four dB all the way down to 12 dB. So you can see there's, there's an eight dB difference between the peak and the trough there. So obviously that's, uh, that's not ideal. We want as flat a possible um, uh, curve through the pass band. So let me start adjusting the um, input and output pot. So I've adjusted that a little bit. Let's, the, uh, let's let the, um, let's let the uh, trace calm down a bit. Okay, so now I've uh, adjusted the uh, the input and output impedances, and you can see there's two things happening. One, uh, one of the uh, is that the uh, pass band has flattened out, but you can also see that there is a greater insertion loss um, as I'm as I'm increasing the um, the resistance on the input and output. So let's keep going. Let's see if we can get a, a as flat a possible um, as flat a possible curve in the uh, in the pass band there. Bear with me, I'll just adjust this. It's getting reasonable now. So, that's probably as flat as I'm going to get it. And ideally what you want is between the peak and the, and the trough, there is uh, less than one dB between the peak and the trough. So we, the trough there is 16.25 and the peak is 14.99. So it's not, it's not quite one dB, but, but, but it's close enough. So let's uh, look at the um, let's look at the actual uh, width of that uh, of that uh, pass band now. So let's go three dBs down from here. So that's minus nineteen thereabouts, and then on the other side. So that's between. 9.9966 megahertz and 10.0006 megahertz. So between those two, is about 4K, uh, 4 kilohertz difference between those two. So that's using a 56 picofarad capacitor. So on the next step, we'll look at uh, um, uh, the, how the uh, 150 picofarad and how that affects the uh, the shape and the bandwidth of the crystal filter. Okay, so I, now I've moved on to using uh, 150 uh, picofarad uh, as the capacitor in the filter, and you can see I've left the markers here from before. So these, this was the old marker, the old markers here, and you can see that the filter has uh, dramatically uh, narrowed, which is exactly what you, we expect. So we go up in in capacitance, the um, the bandwidth of the filter decreases. Uh, so let's uh, have a look at that. Uh, how, how far that bandwidth is. So uh, let's go 3 dBs down from here, roughly. And on the other side too. So let's say around about there. So that's from uh, 9.9982 9 Nine point nine nine six four nine nine eight two uh, six four. So that's about one point eight kilohertz um, uh, bandwidth on that on that crystal filter. And again, I haven't adjusted. I've set the um, the uh, uh, I've got the uh, input and output uh, terminating resistors both set to zero. So let's let's adjust that for flatness in the pass band. See what we get. And again, you see the same thing. There is a, uh, the, um, uh, we get a flatter uh, pass band, but there is a greater insertion loss. So that's basically uh, all I wanna go through in, uh, in this video. Um, I'm gonna sort of go back to the radio in the next video, but uh, um, uh, I hope this, is, uh, this has been helpful and um, definitely uh, interested in any comments.